محمد عبده ورسوله سيد ولد آدم في دار القرار وعلى آله وأصحابه الأخيار الأبرار أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تقف ما ليس لك به علم إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤولا وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أضمن لي ما بين لحيه وما بين رجليه أضمن له الجنة صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله الكريم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد My dear respected brothers and elders in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, since the day He brought us into this world, since the day He created us, since the day we were born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us in this world. And you know, since the day we were born, we have been at a war with the shaitan. We have been at a war with the shaitan. And since the day we were born, until the day we will die, we will constantly be at a war with the shaitan. And throughout our entire lives, every single day, every single day, will be brought, you know, choices in front of us. Choices, and these choices are those choices that will lead, that will lead us either to Jannah or either to Jahannam. Enti- our entire lives, we have to realize our entire lives, these choices will be brought towards us, right? Something good or something bad. And these choices that we make, these are what is going to, you know, what is going to take us on the Day of Judgment. These are going to take us to Jannah or these are going to take us to Jahannam. My dear respected brothers and elders, my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave us many body parts, right? He gave us many body parts, and with these body parts, we can do so much good, so much good. But you know, with some of these body parts, we can also do so much bad, so much bad. And to put it into perspective, one day, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala, an, one day he was walking by, and he walked by Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he was sitting down and he was doing something very strange. He was pulling on his tongue. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was pulling on his tongue so much so, you know, it was as if he was trying to rip it out. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said, Ya Abu Bakr, ma, you know, ghafr Allahu lak. He said, Ya Abu Bakr, stop, what, stop it, what are you doing? He said, what are you doing? Stop it. And he said, may Allah forgive you. You know, saying, you know, stop, stop what you're doing. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said, Hadha qad awradani al-mawadid. He said, this thing right here, this, this tongue right here, it has taken me and it has brought me to very dangerous places. Right? This tongue. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he is known for being, you know, one of the greatest companions of the Messenger of Allah He is known for being such a soft-hearted person, such a person that, you know, when he was in Mecca, and he was leaving Mecca, and he was brought back by, you know, someone gave him protection. And he said, and you know, the condition of this protection was that if he was going to stay in Mecca, then he is not allowed to recite Qur'an out loud. Because when he would recite Qur'an, he would recite with so much emotion. And the women and you know, the children of Mecca, they would gather around him. They would gather around him just to listen to him recite the Qur'an. So much emotion and he would cry. This man, he would cry so much reciting the Qur'an. There's so much, so much love and so much khushu he had in his salah. And so the, you know, the people of Mecca, the, 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 the kuffar of Mecca, they said that if Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, if he wants to stay here, then he is not allowed to recite the Qur'an out loud. He is not allowed to pray his salah out loud. And you know, Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, in the beginning, he didn't say anything. But it, it was not in his fitrah. It was, it was not, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't live without reciting the salah like this. He could not live like this. And he would recite out loud, and he would cry out loud. And the women and the children of Mecca, they would gather around him. They would be in awe listening to his Qur'an. Listening to his Qur'an, they would be in awe of, of you know, listening to him crying and weeping. And you know, uh, to the point where the person, the person who gave him protection, he said, Abu Bakr, I can't, I can't give you protection like this. You have to follow the conditions. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said, he said that, you know, I don't need your protection. I'm in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Umar radiallahu anhu, he found him pulling, pulling his own tongue. You know, if, if this is the state of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, someone who has so much love and so much fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's pulling his own tongue out. Pulling his own tongue out. What is, what is our state? Right? How fearful should we be? How fearful should we be in using this tongue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu he said, Man samata najah. Right? In another place he said, Fal yaqul khayran awl yasmut. Right? Whoever, whoever has this ability to speak, whoever has a tongue to speak, he should, he should only speak good. He should only speak good or he should remain silent. And he said, whoever has remained silent, whoever stays silent, he has, you know, he has, he has gotten salvation. He has gotten salvation, remaining silent. Right? And so the Messenger of Allah he also said in the hadith that I mentioned, that man li ma bayna lahyehi, wa ma bayna lahul jannah. 
that whoever gives me the guarantee, whoever gives me the guarantee of the chastity of what is between his jaws and what is between his legs, I will guarantee him Jannah. Right? Guaranteeing someone Jannah is a big thing. How did the Messenger of Allah how did he guarantee someone Jannah like this? How did he guarantee someone Jannah like this? Right? And so we realized that from this, that the Messenger of Allah he realized, he realized how important the tongue was, how dangerous the tongue was. He realized how, how so, he was so dangerous that he said, whoever, whoever, got, whoever guards this, whoever takes care of this, I will guarantee them Jannah. I will guarantee them Jannah. And the, in the life of the Messenger of Allah we see that the Messenger of Allah he was brought into so many situations, so many different situations where we, he had every single right to respond in an angry manner. He had every single right to uh, you know, respond in a, in, a, in a manner that may not be befitting to him. Right, extremely angry. But it was the nature of the Messenger of Allah It was his nature, it was his fitrah, that he would respond in such a calm manner, in such a you know, easy and relaxed manner. You know, to the point where because of this, so many people became Muslim. So many people became Muslim. An example of this is you know, the story of Zayd bin Su'anna. Zayd bin Su'anna was a Jew at the time of the Messenger of Allah and he would say to them, you know, he would say, he, he, would, he would say, and he would go around and he would say that, you know, I'm a Jew and I've, I'm a learned Jew, right? I studied the books. I studied the books. And I have learned and I've seen in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu I have seen in him every single, every single characteristic of a prophet. Every single characteristic of a prophet except two things. Except two things I have not recognized in him yet. One thing is that whenever someone is ignorant towards him, Whenever someone is you know, ignorant towards him, whenever someone is being ignorant towards him, he responds to them in a good manner. Right? He responds to them with forbearance. And nobody is ever, nobody's ever more ignorant towards him except that he responds with forbearance. These two things. The first thing was that if anyone responds to him with ignorance, he responds to them with good. And if the more ignorant someone is, the more forbearance, the more, the more forbearance he shows. And so Zayd bin Sunnah, knowing this, he said that, you know, one day I will catch the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I will try and test him through this. I'll try and test him through this. And so one day, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's standing with Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu an. He and Ali radiallahu an, they were standing and a Bedouin came to them. A Bedouin came to them and he said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my, my, you know, I'm, I'm coming from this town and in this town we have, you know, a famine has fallen upon us. A famine has fallen upon us. And I fear because my, my people, they're new Muslims. They have just become Muslim, and I fear that because of this famine, because of what has fallen upon them, I fear that they will leave the fold of Islam. They will start thinking bad things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they will leave the fold of Islam. And so I fear, I fear that, you know, because of this famine, you know, my, my, my generations will, not, will no longer be Muslim. And so, Ya Rasulullah sallam, please give me some, a little bit of money, I can take it back to my people, and I can, you know, buy some food with this. Right, give me a little bit of money. And so the Messenger of Allah sallam, he said, I have nothing with me. I have nothing with me. And he looked at Ali radiallahu an, and he asked Ali radiallahu an, he said, do you have anything that we can give them? He said, do you have anything that we can give them? And Ali radiallahu an, he said, I have nothing either. And so Zayd, he saw this as an opportunity and he went to the Messenger of Allah sallam, and he said, Ya Muhammad, because he was not a Muslim, he said, Ya Muhammad, I have, you know, I have a little bit of money, I can give it to you, just pay me back at a later time. Pay me back at a later time. And the Messenger of Allah sallam, seeing the severity of the situation, he took the money from him. He took the money from him and they decided a time where the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he would give him the money back. And so a little while later, two or three days before the time came for the Messenger of Allah وسلم, to pay back Zayd, right? Just two or three days before. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, Umar radiallahu an, Uthman radiallahu an, they were all walking together. All of them were walking together back from a funeral. And they were walking together. And Zayd, he walked up to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and he said, Ya Muhammad, and he grabbed him by the collar. In front of his, you know, his best of friends, he grabbed the Messenger of Allah وسلم, by the collar. And he said, Ya Muhammad, pay me back my debt. Right? Pay me back my debt. For you sons of Abdul Muttalib, you are known to differ in payments. You are known to differ in payments. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he had every single right to become angry. He grabbed him by his collar. He had every single right to become angry. But the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he didn't say anything. Rather, he smiled. He smiled at Zayd and Umar radiallahu an, knowing Umar radiallahu an, he became so angry. He became so angry with Zayd that he said that if it wasn't for the Messenger of Allah so, so standing here right now, if it wasn't for him standing here right now, that the Rabb to be safe here, that I would out of cut off your head, I would have killed you right now. But since the Messenger of Allah so, is standing here, since he is standing here, you know I'm not going to do anything to it. Yeah. And so the Messenger of Allah so, he looked at Umar radiallahu an, and he said, Ya Umar, we are not in need of you right. We are not in need of this right now. Right? We don't need your anger right now. Rather, what I, need, uh, what I need from you is that you tell me to pay, you tell me to pay back his debt. 
you tell me to pay him back and you tell him to you know you know handle this in a better manner then that is what we need from you right now and so the messenger of allah وسلم, he went and he told umar radiallahu an and he said you know go 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 get the money for him go get the money for him and pay him back extra right get, pay him back extra for this inconvenience that happened and so a little while later zaid he went he went to umar radiallahu an and he said ya umar he said do you know who i am and so umar radiallahu an he said i don't know who you are and he said, I'm Zayd bin Sa'unna, I'm the Jewish, I'm the learned Jewish. And so the Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, he said, you are Zayd, you are the Jewish scholar. How could you handle, how could you deal, how could you treat the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu like this? Right? What gave you the right to treat the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu like this? And Zayd, he responded, he said that, you know, I recognized every single sign of prophethood in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, except these two things. That when someone is ignorant towards him, he responds with patience and forbearance. And the more ignorant someone is towards him, the more patient he becomes. And so after this incident, I realized that the Messenger of Allah he has these two qualities inside of him. And because of this Zayd, he also became Muslim. Right? And so we can see that in the life of the Messenger of Allah having a little bit of patience, controlling your tongue, controlling your, your, you know, your, your feelings in such situations, these can cause so many people to become Muslims. Because the Kufar, they don't look, they don't read our books. Right? They read us. They read us as Muslims, they read us. And so we have to treat every single person, this tongue that we have, we have to, we have to, we have to use it in a good manner. We have to use it in a good manner. And if we cannot use it in a good manner, the Messenger of Allah, he, he advised us to stay silent. He advised us to stay silent. Right? Another story of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal radiallahu an. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi, sorry. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, one day he was, he was walking in a town. And you know, it, was a, it, was, it was a strange town. He was a traveler. And he, he arrived at a masjid. He arrived at a masjid and he, and he intended to sleep the night there. He intended to spend the night there. And the guardian of that masjid, the, the, the keeper of that masjid, he kicked Imam Ahmad bin Hamad rahmatullahi He kicked him out. And so Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi he, you know, he tried multiple times. He said, you know, I need to stay here. I don't have any place to stay. And so the guardian, he kicked, he, he kicked him out of the masjid. And so there was a baker, he was walking by. And he saw this. And he invited Imam Ahmad inside. He, invi he invited Imam Ahmad to stay with him. And so Imam Ahmad, he accepted. And he spent the night with his baker. He spent the night with his baker. And Imam Ahmad... He saw and he was, you know, he just wanted to see what this baker was doing throughout his night. And throughout this entire night, this baker, whatever he was doing, whatever he, you know, whatever dough he was, you know, dealing with, he would, he would, he would constantly be in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, constantly doing istighfar and asking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he didn't say anything except istighfar, except, you know, the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so in the morning, Imam Ahmad, he asked him, he said, you know, what were you doing? The entire night you were in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Has, has any benefit come to you from doing this? Have you gained any from, anything from doing this? You know, has any, you know, have you gained any benefit from doing this? And so the baker who responded to Imam, Imam Ahmad, rahmatullahi alayhi, he said that because of this, every single dua I have ever made, every single dua I have ever made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every single one of them have been accepted. Every single dua has been accepted just because of me, you know, constantly staying in the dhikr and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said every single dua has been accepted except one dua. And Imam Ahmad, he asked, you know, what is that dua? He said that I have heard of a great scholar his name, is, his name is Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. And I have you know, yearned to meet him. I've yearned to see him. But I've never gotten the chance to see him. I'm busy you know, with my own life. I've never gotten the chance to see him. And so Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi, he started crying. And he said that because of you, because of you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dragged me out of my own home. You know, dragged me out of the masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dragged me all the way to your own home. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of you, he's dragged me to you. And today I'm in front of you. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keeping your tongue moist with good, with good words and you know, keeping your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inshallah you know, give, us, give us forgiveness on the day of judgment. Right? Because this tongue right here, this tongue, the Messenger of Allah he gave so many ahadith, so many ahadith in regards to protecting the tongue. Protecting the tongue. He said that whoever protects his tongue, I will, go, I will guarantee him jannah. I will guarantee him jannah. Right? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to, you know, and our entire lives to spend in keeping this tongue safeguarded. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to only speak good. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us for only good things to come on this tongue. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to become from those people that constantly stay in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> Alhamdulillah.
الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فانه لا يضر الا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وأزواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر واستقهم حياء أثمان وقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد رسوله اللهم اغفر العباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابه لا تتخذوهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير أمتي قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى أولى وأجل وأتم وأكبر وأقيم الصلاة